Who who would have thought that what started out as a group of four men putting together a show for comic book fanatics back in 1970 would turn into a multi-million dollar business? Uh, I mean, it, it's amazing the amount of shows that are run across the country. But that's what Comic-Con has become. Currently, one of the most famous gatherings is underway with the original Comic-Con in San Diego, California. John Macaluso runs the Wizard World Comic-Cons, which have shown incredible growth in only the last two years, going from eight shows in 2013 to 16 this year. And they already apparently have more than two dozen scheduled in 2015. And John joins us from what I'm guessing is a very sunny and comfortable San Diego, California today. John, thanks for coming on the show. Greg, you're welcome. Good morning. Did I hit it right? It's probably like, what, about 72 and sunny out there in San Diego right now? Yeah, a little 74 maybe. Yeah, well, that's about what we got here, so you're, you're not missing much back on the East Coast. You're you know, you know, you're from California. You've done time in New York, so I understand that. Uh, the only thing I'm missing is the humidity. <laughs> that's true, yeah, but we don't even have that today. Big thunderstorm came through Philadelphia last night. Uh, listen, the amount of people that, that are there in San Diego and, and that are there at your shows, it's amazing. I mean, what kind of numbers are we talking about in San Diego this weekend coming up? Well, I, I would have to guess. As you know, uh, San Diego International is a completely different company yep. than, than Wizard World. Um, they're the oldest uh, Comic-Con. And for those who don't know, it's just short for Comic Book Convention. That's how they started. Um, that's how all the Comic Cons started. Uh, we happen to own the second oldest, which was started in 1972, the Chicago Comic Con. But to, to really answer your question, there has to be hundreds of thousands of people that come to San Diego, whether to be in the show or to just be in the outside outlying events that happen around here and, and it really is and, and for your shows around the country i mean it really is a, a cult-like following for some of the people that show up in the at, at these conventions you know think of it as um if you think of football and you think of going to a chicago bear game in the middle of january and you have the 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 fun guys with no shirts on that have bears written across their chest it's the same type of fanatical fan that comes to these shows. Yeah. They're, they're people very deep rooted in their love for comic books and superheroes and villains and zombies. And is that how you got kind of started in this because of your love of that type of, of stuff? Uh, no, I was actually a clothing manufacturer for 25 years and, um, I sold my company in 2007 and retired and around 2010 and a half, my wife and kids sat me down and said, listen, it's really nice that you're home, but you got to get out of the house. You got to go, you got to go find something to do because you're driving us all crazy. And I, uh, actually invested, um, in Widget World. And they asked me, um, I guess because of my business experience, if I would go on the board. And, uh, after our first board meeting, they kind of asked me to leave the room. Because I asked so many questions, and I called my wife and I said, "You know what? My first board meeting. I think I'm about to get kicked off the board." <laughs> oh, and, I, and I walked back in the room. And they said, "You think you would take over the company?" <laughs> so I said, I, "I thought about it a little bit." And um, in March of 2012, um, I accepted the position as the CEO and chairman of Wizard World. It's it's an amazing thing because I've been to the one in, in Philadelphia uh, a couple of times now, and it really isn't just about comic books and the people that you know design the artwork for the comic books. It really is multifaceted, where you include you know various TV stars. I mean, one of the biggest things now is is the pro wrestlers go to these things. I mean, I mean, it truly is. It, it has expanded kind of spider web out from the comic book industry. Well, I, I think you have to really look at it as it's gone from just comic books to encompass the world of popular fiction. Okay. So you, so just for example, in our Philadelphia show, which is a great show for us, um, we have hundreds of artists and creators. We have hundreds of vendors 
that come and sell all their wares. We have 40 or 50 different celebrities yeah. from um, the, the movie industry to the to TV. Um, it's, really, it's really become a pop culture event. And Dean Kane is one of those guys I know has been in Philadelphia, and I know Dean having uh, he played uh, football at, at Princeton, uh, and I do the games for them as well. Uh, but it really is it's a great avenue for a lot of these stars as well to stay connected with, with the people that follow them. Oh, for sure. Um, and first of all, Dean Kane is really one of my favorite guys of all. He's truly a gentleman um, to, to the 10th degree. He's, he's yeah. a great guy. We we get we get guys like Chris Hemsworth was in was yeah. in Philly. Um, Whoopi Goldberg was just there. We had uh, Sebastian Stan and, and Anthony Mackie just in in Philadelphia. Um, Norman Rita, who was the biggest star on TV, yeah. um, was at our Philadelphia show. It's so we we get it, it's no longer um, Comic Con is no longer the place where kind of your career is at the end of its tail. Let me go do a, a, a Comic Con. Today, it's, you're out in the forefront. Um, movie studios are, are pushing their, their celebrities to go to these events sure. to talk about what's premiering, when, are, when a new TV series happening. It's pretty unbelievable to see the change. So really, what was the tipping point if, for this industry as a whole where we've just seen this exponential growth over over the last few years where... As I mentioned at the open, you've gone from what eight shows a couple of years ago to now you're going to have more than two dozen next year. Well, um, from what and this is really from what I'm told, but in 2003, Angelina Jolie made her first appearance at the San Diego show, and that's kind of when all the movie studios took notice and decided that they need to get behind this industry. Sure, and it's. It's amazing when you see all the movies now being um, now being made. Probably sixty percent of them are popular fiction and sci-fi. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and then you see, you know, uh, Dwayne Johnson's got the Hercules movie coming out, and, and as you mentioned, Angelina Jolie has done a couple of them. It's it really is. Are you seeing that part of the industry? as a really big potential growth area for these Comic-Con shows, then you're going to see more and more of the movie theaters want to have their stars at some of these shows as part of their normal promotion when they go on TV shows across the country? No, I, I, at the bigger shows, yes. You know, it, it's amazing. I always look at it this way. Um, you, you look at a show like The Walking Dead, who five years ago when it started had 500,000 viewers. Yeah. Today it has over 20 million yeah. So there's 19 and a half million new fans of Comic Con from one show. Yeah. Look at the movies that Marvel puts out, um, and Disney, and the the Avengers, and and Thor. By the way, Chris Hemsworth is another great guy. But look at look at look at the amount of business that they're doing at these movies. They're doing billions of dollars, you know, worldwide. So the fan base is growing in leaps and bounds. People obviously do come to see all these stars, but how much of the comic books and that part of it is still a part of the core of the business? Oh, it's 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 still there at every show. We 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 have tons of comic book vendors and comic book enthusiasts that come to the show to go find the one edition of something that's missing from their collection. Sure. How much of the digital? The change that we've gone through with so much of the content going to to digital formats has helped you along with the fact that people can obviously go back and and look at old episodes of Star Trek, you know, on on YouTube or whatever it might be. How much does that play into this as well? Uh, it's it's got to be a lot uh, to give to give you a number. I couldn't tell you exactly, yeah, but. It's unbelievable to think that you could go up and download any comic book that you want now. Or go watch, you know, any old episode of one of your favorite, you know, shows growing up. Right. So pretty cool. So you I mean you guys just had the, the Philadelphia event, what, last month? And yeah. so what kind of numbers did you see there in terms of the amount of people that showed up? Because it was a two day event in Philadelphia? It was a four day event. Four day event. Four days out, we we see we see 
you know, 30 and 40% growth every, every year that we do a show. We, we're, we're taking additional space every year. That's great. You must have a pretty good PR guy helping you out with that. Uh, he's great. His name is Jerry Milani, and he's a great guy as well. And, and now, the, we just started. We just started these these new events, also, which are probably going to be the next hot thing called the, ours. It's called Social Con, where we get all these young YouTube and Vine um, and Instagram stars. Oh, and bring and get them involved too. Yes. So uh, the, I I noticed uh, on your bio, your there is what the Con TV Digital Network that's that's in the works right now. So the Con TV. Um, Digital network. If you if you think of it, think of it as a, a channel like like a Netflix, but on on this channel it will be it will be geared towards the Comic Con goer, the fan of popular fiction, the fan of horror, the fan of sci fi. And we're really really excited. We went into partnerships with um, a company by the name of Cinedyne, which is the largest provider of content to um, iTunes and on the web we own 50,000 titles about 10,000 of them really hit our target audience and we're going to launch sometime um, in November so is this is something that is going to end up being a a a pay model or is it going to be probably something that's going to be free to the public it's, it's, it's probably a freemium model. Right. Um, you can get stuff for free. You can get more stuff if you pay. Um, there'll, be, there'll be live streaming from events. There'll be original um, content that we're developing um, besides all of the content that we own. And now one of the other things that I haven't brought up uh, until this point, but is that the artwork that a lot of these, uh, the artists do for these books, but there's a lot of, posters that are made and it the artwork plays a big role in this as well sure we have we have some of the the best artists in the country that come that come to our shows guys like neil adams and greg horn and mike mignola um these, these, these are unbelievably serious committed um artists that have been doing this for years that have done some of the biggest covers um that have got that, that are going for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Sure. Now, as the CEO of Wizard World Comic Con at this point, as you've seen this grow over the last couple of years, how much were you very aware of being careful to not grow too fast, or was it just there that you saw the opportunity that okay, we're doing so well in these cities? we have the opportunity to reach out to other markets that are, are just natural fits. It, it, which side of this did you fall on? You know, you know, sometimes you get a little lucky and we, we do, a, we do a lot of research. We do a lot of research about other shows in, in, in certain areas. We, we look for, for cities that um, have a need for a show. Um, we're having a, um, a very successful first quarter We'll release our numbers on the second quarter in about three and a half weeks. Um, but when we look for cities, we've just looked for the right demographic, and we what we we like to call clear sky cities. What's what's clear sky cities? And when there 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 aren't um, really shows going on the way that we produce oh, them. Right. Uh, we have a certain style when you come to our show. It's pretty consistent from show to show. Um, there are other companies that do other shows that are different than ours. So we, we, we look for the spots where we think that we can make an impact with the audience in the cities that we go to. And it's obviously a, a model that works well for you that you can replicate over a variety of cities and not have to make too many changes to it. Well, listen, you, you, you're really, you know, the number one mantra at the company is give the fan a great experience, give the fan a great experience, give the fan a great experience. <laughs> that's what we that's what we want to do. We want to make sure that our attendees come to the show and have a good time. We want them to walk out and say, "Now that was a good event." Now, for the most part, I think we do that. But we're, you know, from my eyes, I still look at us as as a young, growing company, and you know, we always look to get better at every show that we do. So it's it's a learning process for us 
as well as we go. Yeah, and and as long as these movie uh, uh, movie companies continue to make superhero movies, this is not a bad thing for you, correct? It's definitely not a bad thing for us. <laughs> well, what is the relationship like with the, with the entities? Because obviously, it, it's very good uh, with the movie uh, movie companies. It's obviously good with, let's say, you know, the WWE that that has superstars there. But y- you have to obviously build a relationship with these companies as well to be able to, I guess, in some respects, have earned the trust for them to present these people at these shows. You know, we we. We like to think that we have a very good relationship with all the talent agencies and all the managers that work in, in this field. Um, from what I'm told around the industry, we've built that trust and that respect level to a point where we're probably buying more talent than anyone else in the industry. Sure. Well, it, and it's an interesting list of people. I mentioned Dean Kane. I I think you also have William Shatner that's in the mix. Uh, a couple of the guys from uh, uh, the TV show on CBS, and I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, Big Bang. The Big Bang Theory. Big Bang, right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Simon and Kunai. Kunai. Yeah. yeah. But so when, when when you look at the the guest list, for some of our shows, and from yeah, you know, from Bill Shatner, who has really turned out to be a, a great friend. Yeah. Um, but we have Patrick Stewart. Who is you know one of the, the the nicest gentlemen you're going to meet in a long time? Sure. Of course, Norman Reedus is is awesome. And then we get we have some stars that come over from the UK. One of the biggest stars is a is a young man by the name of Matt Smith, who played the Doctor on Doctor Who. Okay. Um, and then we have um, you know guys like David Boreanaz and Nathan Fillion coming to the show, and Carl Urban, who are you know big time stars on TV. Um, Erica Durant. Is coming to our Chicago show. Our Chicago show is our our biggest show that, that we do. It's our big call it playoff game. Yeah. Um, you know, you get guys like Stan Lee, the creator of it all. Yeah. And we have the next generation cast coming, which is really exciting. And Evan Peters, who is um, um, in the new movie X Men, um, really terrific young man. So, so I mean, and by and. You know, if you're a fan of horror, you know, we have Bruce Campbell coming. And Bruce is one of the all-time guys, too. So what is the schedule now you, you know, for you? What are the next couple of shows that, that are coming up for, for the fans? So our next show is actually next week in San Antonio. And then we, then we go to Chicago, um, Richmond, Nashville, Austin, Ohio, and then we end out the year in Tulsa and Reno. That's a pretty good list of shows. You're going to be a very busy man. I don't think your your family's going to have to worry about you being around the house very much. They're, they're okay. They're okay with it. Yeah, they, they, it's you're, you're almost like a like working in the baseball lifestyle. You're going to have to have them come visit you on the road a little bit. Yeah, you know, you know it, it's funny because my, my my wife will come to a show with me. My kids will come work a show yeah. or two. So it's um. We're all kind of enjoying the whole experience together. Well, it, it's been great to talk to you. Uh, enjoy San Diego. I know you're going to, this might be a little bit of a respite for you that you're not actually running this show. You can actually take a, maybe a half second breath and, and then gather yourself for San Antonio coming up. You know, it, it's funny that you say that because as I got to the show yesterday and walked around the show at such a leisurely pace <laughs> as opposed to frantically running around our shows like a lunatic yeah exactly well hey john uh enjoy your time in san diego enjoy san antonio and uh hopefully i'll get a chance to meet you when you guys come to philadelphia next year well we'll see you next year absolutely john macaluso who is the ceo of uh, wizard world's comic cons as we mentioned the original one which is not affiliated with wizard world but it is going on right now in san diego and everything you hear about that that one every year is that it just continues to grow and grow and grow and having taken my kids to the one in in philadelphia it's amazing when you go there to see not only the amounts of people but how they they are decked out it's in some respects it's like halloween when you go to these shows because everybody is dressed for their favorite star they want to meet them I, i you know as i mentioned it's it's a wide range of people 
uh, the stars that come to these shows. Just kind of amazing. And I'm glad we could bring that to you because uh, it is certainly one of those growth industries uh, that has basically been spawned out of the interest of comic books many, many years ago. And that's how some things work in the the business world and, and entrepreneurship. And glad we could bring it to you. Great week of shows. Many thanks to all of you for joining us over. 